Right, got something exciting to show you, which has just arrived. Uh, this is from Hartley and Noble. If I was a proper YouTuber, I'd have done an unboxing video, but uh, I didn't think about it, so here it is unboxed. But basically, it's a modified bat insert for the Russian doll bat system and a grid. And what you do is you insert that part in, insert the grid into that, and then you've got a guide to zero your throwing gauge or your laser throwing guide, depending on what you use. So if you know what size you want to throw something to, you can have a like a definitive size for each piece. Um, and then rather than what I normally do is I set I throw a piece, set the guide to that, and then throw all subsequent pieces that day to that guide. Um, it does allow for a little bit of variation between days. Um, this way you have a definitive, this is how big I throw my mug kind of size. And um, you just have it marked on here before you throw, you put this in. Anyway, this is a prototype, so this is literally, I just got this, and I'm going to throw some swirly mugs. Yeah, medium swirly mugs. Try right, just thinking, have I weighed out the right size balls of clay, but I have. So this is pretty much exactly the size that I and shape that I like my medium mugs. So this is a fired size of nine, diameter of nine, and a height of pretty much spot on nine, which is nice and convenient. This is, um, uh, the reason it counts out double is because you're measuring the diameter and not radius, and then this is absolute, so I've got to account for shrinkage. Um, you could do these, I'll talk to Nick and Stuart about doing variations with shrinkage accounted for, but at the moment this prototype is absolute size. So that line is 10 centimeters up, which means if I want to throw it to nine by nine, um, about 10 and a half by 10 and a half would be good for this clay. Um, and that's a shrinkage of about 12, 13% and then I'm just rounding, but that should be close enough for this. So I'm using the laser level that I always use, a uh, link on my recommended tools page. So this is coming in slightly below 10, so I increase the height. I haven't yet, but I'm going to mount a tripod there. I just need the, the, the telescopic bit at the top of a tripod, so I don't actually need the rest of it. But um, the laser levels come with a screw thread so you can screw them onto a tripod, which is very useful when you want a lot of height adjustment, but I only need probably that much within a certain range. So I'm gonna modify something at some point but I have not yet done it, so I am currently just propping it on things. So that's gonna be a fraction low, but that's okay. You can always, the nice thing with this is that um, you don't need it to be perfect, you just need to know how you're missing. So in this case, that's set to about 10 and a half, by say 10 and a quarter. So I need to throw slightly above the line and if I come out to hit it, that should be right. Um, one mistake that I have already made with the first test piece I threw with this, and this is only because I've got the camera directly in front of the wheel and the laser's off to the side, is you have to make sure that you don't have it twisted because I had it facing the camera and it actually makes a bigger difference than I thought it would. So make sure you're hitting it perpendicular, even if your laser's only two inches off the side of the camera, uh, it does actually make a noticeable difference. And the way you'd tell um, would just be by turning it, the point at which the laser hits the furthest in is the point at which it's perpendicular. Uh, and then one other point is that if these do come for sale and this works as a guide on how to use them, your bat will have one hole and one slot. And the reason for that is to accommodate a little bit of movement 
as it swells and shrinks, which means that you want to line the holes up with the laser so that if there is any movement, it's in this plane and doesn't affect the readings. If it was this way, it would be essentially, you'd be shuffling it sideways. So line the holes up with the laser, uh, and then even if the whole thing is shunted back ever so slightly, it won't matter. Make sure it's perpendicular to your guide, uh, and then preferably do a slightly better job than just stacking your laser on top of things. But that is that. Uh, I also got a whole load of new tile inserts, which is nice. So now I have enough that I don't have to keep um, washing them when I'm changing clay. I don't have to wash all of them, but I, I don't have as many as I want twice, essentially. So um, when I'm switching clay for a long period, where I know I'm going to be throwing in one clay for weeks or months, I wash the bats between use, but now I can just set them aside because I've got a significant amount of um, spares. Now this is finishing off a bag of the dark clay that has been sat around um, I've been throwing in the, the PF580 for a month or so. So this was opened, half used, and um, I would say that it's stiffer and harder to throw than I remember it being. But it might just be that I'm used to the other clay. Because it is amazing how quickly you get used to a clay when you're throwing just one and then how weird even clays that you that you throw far more of they don't feel right for a little while like dragging someone else's car for a bit right i've hit the line i think because you lose a little bit of height when you put the swirl in so I am going to go pull the wall just a fraction more. I reckon that'll do. So I've overshot by a couple of mil and I think I'll lose that. Um, I don't know how far back my guide to doing the swirly pattern goes but something that I've added I mean this is probably in the last two years so then the video is quite that old but I always rig the outside smooth first because otherwise you start to get the throwing lines on the swirls as so it's sort of a pattern on a pattern which I'm not so keen on well I should have probably accounted for that in the width Anyway, so do that, clay wet, and just as a, a recap, if you've not seen the swirly thing before, um, what I do is I've got one finger on the inside, two on the outside, supporting above and below, wheel speed slow, and then just bring the two up together. Should be pretty good. Diameter is pretty much spot on ten and a half, which should mean a fired size of nine. And we know that the height will be just a touch more, but only a touch, and then the laser will set low. So I'm really happy with how that worked, and what that means is that I can throw the rest of the balls of clay I've got to this guide, and I'll know that they'll not only be the same size as this one. They'll be the same size as that one, 
and then all subsequent ones should be within a, a small amount which will make it much easier to do sets over time um, I need to be slightly cleverer with my conversions between the two clays because they have quite different shrinkages which is a bit of a pain but um, just means I've got to account for it when I do it um, but yeah so thanks to Nicky and Stuart for sending me that prototype hopefully that means that they'll be available for sale in the near future so if you want one I'll put a link to Hartley and Noble below um, and probably won't be too long before you can start to order them.